and welcome back to another Anesthesia step-by-step -step tutorial. Today we're looking at how to manage increased airway pressures for a ventilated patient. As always, you've induced your patient beautifully, and the surgeon is well into their operation, when suddenly the ventilator starts alarming and warning you about high airway pressures. What do you do? Well, as always, we're going to take a step-by-step -step approach to troubleshoot the problem and fix things as we go, starting as usual with ensuring we're delivering 100% oxygen at high flows to buy us time. While oxygenation isn't currently an issue, any pathology causing a high airway pressure is likely to result in desaturation relatively quickly. It's a good idea to check on the monitor whether the FiO2, that is the inspired oxygen concentration, genuinely is at 100%, because if not, the cause of the issue may be an obstruction within your breathing circuit. Check your equipment all the way from ventilator to patient, or the other way, checking for obstructions that may be causing high pressures in the system, such as the wheel of a chair or other equipment compressing the tubing of the breathing circuit. Check the bellows are going up and down or that the bag is moving. If you're happy your equipment is working, you can move on to airway. Check the position, that the tube isn't in too far, then have a look at your capnography trace. In the case of any obstruction to airflow, this will show the classic pattern on the right rather than the nice square trace on the left. Listen to the patient's chest for asymmetrical air entry or wheeze and look at the tidal volumes on the monitor. Switching from the ventilator to the bag and manually ventilating the patient is also useful to get a feel for the patient's lungs. Remember to use the APL valve to ensure you can actually push air into the lungs. Remember in the short term, oxygenation takes priority over trying to protect the lungs from high pressures. So use as much pressure as you need to get the air in and out of the lungs if the sats are dropping. Now usually by this point you'll probably have an idea as to what might be causing the problem. It could include things like bronchospasm or pressure caused by pneumoperitoneum during laparoscopic surgery, especially in the head down position. It could be kinking of the tube, it could be one lung ventilation due to bronchial intubation or even just asynchronous ventilation due to inadequate relaxation of the patient. One final thing to check is the circulatory status of the patient to check for any hemodynamic compromise. Now cardiovascular collapse in conjunction with high airway pressures is anaphylaxis until proven otherwise. However, it may also indicate possible breath stacking where the patient has insufficient time to exhale before the next breath is given. This leads up to a buildup of pressure in the thorax. You can see this on the flow trace on the monitor where the flow doesn't quite reach zero before the next breath is delivered. As always, make sure you're calling for help early rather than late and use the quick reference handbook to guide you. That's the immediate management of increased airway pressures in theatre. Please comment with any feedback you might have and subscribe for more videos like this and head over to anesthesia.net for our full range of anaesthetic resources.